called 12 negative thinking traps and how to solve them. I gave you six uh, solutions today. I want to do a quick recap. And uh, this was important to me because everybody has uh, negative thoughts at times. Everybody comes in and, uh, and there isn't anybody that doesn't experience a negative thought from time to time. The truth is, is what are we going to do with that thought? Are we going to cast down the imaginations? Are we going to reject those, those thoughts? Um, is that if it's not in line with our identity, um, for me, who the Bible says we are, if we're not, if that's not an alignment, I'm going to reject it. It's not, it doesn't have to be part of me, right? We can all have, um, we can all have negative moments, negative experiences, bad words spoken to us, bad experiences, but that doesn't have to define us. That doesn't have to um, dictate our day to day and how we think and how we show up, right? All right, who we got on this call? Let's see what's going on. Emilio, hey brother, haven't talked to you in a while. Baxter holding it down, Brandon, David, all right guys, Stephanie, Anthony, good morning, good morning, Carl, all right guys, so let's, uh, let's, good morning, good morning, let's go into uh, a quick recap of these 12 negative thinking traps, and then I'm going to give you the six solutions to these. Number one, perfectionism, this is the refusal to accept any standard short of perfection. If it's not fully functional, absolutely perfect the way we want, we're throwing it out the door and 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 not moving forward with this. And perfectionism, um, really what happens from it and wh where it comes from is negative self-worth, poor self-esteem. Um, and, and we, a lot of times for me, when I've struggled with perfectionism, it's because I was I was attaching my emotional well-being to my content, to what I put out there in internet land. And if it wasn't perf perfect or there was a problem of it, I was taking it um, personally. So I was combining perfectionism. And what was the other one um, that we talked about? Um, it's like personalizing. Yeah, number four, personalization. I would take everything so personally as if it was a reflection of me or who I am instead of just, ah, that piece of content wasn't that great or that ad didn't go too well, right? Um, let's see, we got some comments here. Um, we have the idea. <laughs> yeah, is it perfect, really? Ryan says we have the idea that this is perfect, but is it really? The truth is that there's always room for improvement. Things can always get better. Um, so perfectionism is a trap that keeps you still and keeps you focused on the same things over and over, and not. It's like, uh, it's like running on a treadmill. You're not really getting any going anywhere. All right, number two. All or nothing, black and white thinking. This is the tendency to think in extremes, right? It's either all super good or it's all super negative, right? This is fantastic, the most amazing thing ever, or nothing, not, not at all, right? Um, all right, number three. Guys, if you're just hopping on the call, we're going over 12 negative thinking traps and and bring in six solutions to them as well. Number three is mind reading. This is when we try to infer um, about what's going on in somebody's head. Um, and sometimes you might be right, but the overwhelming majority of the time, we're not. And it's completely um, irrational. We try to act like we can tell what other people are thinking about us or somebody gave you a dirty look and it just must mean, oh, they're talking bad about you or you're getting upset about a situation, a conversation, an event that hasn't even happened. We, we just went nuts in our, our head and, and went from thing to thing to thing until we had this situation that hasn't even occurred yet. Have you ever done that? Played the tape with some, from somebody's thought, right? Mind reading, um, personalization, we just talked about that too. This is basically like a very me-centric, me-centric view of the uh, of the world it's a thinking distortion where people believe that everything that others do or say is somehow related to them it's it's very egotistical um but uh we we do it at time and this pattern this thinking pattern can breed uh insecurity and assumptions of what other others thoughts are uh, an example of this is somebody might be frowning and then 
oh, you know, Susie's probably frowning because of that email I sent last week. I, I forgot to include her. Oh, that she's probably upset with me. And that hasn't happened at all. It's not, it's, it's not, it's not happening. It's not, it's not, it's, it's all, uh, in your head. The other one is blaming. I went off on this one a lot before. Blaming is when other people, situations, circumstances, um, we blame or we find fault with those people, those instances, um, and make those things the reasons why we're not succeeding, um, why we're not, uh, why we're not getting the results we want, or why isn't something a certain way. You know, I can blame, oh, you know, my teacher, I had a teacher in high school told me I'd never be successful in real estate. Um, you know, so I, I, I could have listened to, to that voice and said, you know what, he's right. Um, I could have told uh, my family when they said, you know, you should probably just get a job. I could have, I could have used that and I could have blamed my family. Nobody believes in me, so I'm not going to be successful, right? I would, I would, I could, you, I could blame some of the, uh, the, the past experiences that I've, I've had, some of the uh, abuse uh, or trauma experiences I've had. I could, I could have hung on to those, not progress for them, and blame those for the way I am or the way my business is. And really, you have to break through those things. You have to go through them in order for you to find freedom, in order to find breakthrough. All these negative thinking traps, guys, we have to focus on this. We have to think about this stuff because otherwise we keep going from training to training to course to course to coach to guru and never getting forward. The truth is that the path of resistance is filled with obstacles. The, the path to freedom is filled with obstacles of negative thinking. And you have to successfully navigate those and push those obstacles out of, out of the, the way if you want to succeed. Negative thinking comes to everybody. We don't have to feel guilty for having negative thoughts or, or, or thinking patterns. We have to take responsibility to change them, right? And we talked about creating awareness to begin with that. So the next mindset, we're halfway done. Number six is the good enough complacency mindset. I hit this right after I hit L4 in MLSP. This is when a person is satisfied with their with their level of success, their their lower level of success or achievement. So then they just kind of coast. They kind of just like do what they need to keep the boat afloat. And this uh this <clears throat> this is like doing 80%, you know, not not being excellent. This negative thinking trap leads to mediocrity. There's uh, a few red flags I gave out on the call. Uh, let me know if you guys can ever have ever experienced any of these red flags. Let's see, see some uh, some action on the screen here. Um, working long hours with little to no breaks, not taking rests. Okay, number two, lack of training or understanding your work. You know, you get by with just doing the same strategy or just doing a Facebook lives because we're not gaining more training, we're not getting deeper in our marketing. Uh, number three, your existing team culture or work environment perpetuates um, the complacency mindset or good enough or woe is me or this is the way it's always going to be. Um, and lastly, uh, lack of energy or fatigue. Lack of energy and fatigue can really take uh, somebody out and that can that can allow you to coast and just do I can't try to say this out loud catastrophizing cata catastrophizing <laughs> I'm so bad at saying that word catastrophizing this is irrational thinking uh, that something is far worse than it actually is it's like Oh, we don't have hot water today. That means the pipes must have burst and the and the basement is flooding and I, I need a plumber and I don't have money for the plumber. And oh crap, my, my children are probably gonna drown in the flooded basement now because like, it's just ridiculous. Like you make it, uh, there, there's two kind of ways. Either you catastrophize about something in the future um, or or you, you take it with a current situation. Uh, oh, I'm not generating leads today that means my business is gonna fail i got a webinar on thursday and, and it's monday i only got five leads oh i might as well can't i should just cancel the whole thing 
And so this is no way to operate this. It's completely irrational, fear-based thinking um, that that stops you from, from moving forward. It has you spinning your wheels and, and, and creating anxiety up in here. And, and uh, so let's move on to the next one. Next one is over general generalization. This is when one bad experiences experience dictates all <laughs> of, of your thinking about it. Like, let's say, let's say you are, um, you're, you're doing some Facebook ads and your ad was rejected or, you, uh, you put up your ad, you spent a hundred bucks and you got no results, no leads, or you got like two leads. And so that means, that must mean that Facebook ads don't work for my type of business. Maybe it works for your business, but it doesn't work for me. That's garbage, right? All the, all the Facebook ads, of course it works. They have over 2 million advertisers, <laughs> you know, but we can't say just because blogging didn't work for you five years ago, um, that it doesn't work period, or it won't work now. You're a different person in a different place with a different mentality, and hopefully we have grown, and we can try things again, right? We have to be willing to experience some failure and tolerate that um, in pursuit of success. All right, number nine, negative lens. The negative lens is pretty self-explanatory. It's basically you have these negative lenses, these negative glasses that no matter what happens or what you do, you always see, you're always seeing something wrong with what's happening, with your results, with your list, with your commissions, with with whatever. I gave the example, you take your wife to a Broadway show and the guy in the next row is coughing, right? The guy in the next row is coughing, so you, you make that mean Oh, you must have had, the show was terrible. We had a terrible time because of the guy was coughing, right? This is viewing everything through a negative lens. Instead of saying, this show was amazing, right? We, we, we stay focused on the things that didn't go right or were wrong. And the quick solution for that is gratitude. Gratitude, baby. That, ah, uh, that does so much for you. All right, number 10, minimizing and discounting. I did this too. Uh, I remember I uh, one of my first incentive trips in network marketing. I won a trip. Where did we go? We went to was it Cabo? It was either Cabo San Lucas or Cancun on my first network marketing uh, company trip. And I remember when I won that, I was like, "Yeah, this is awesome!" And I was psyched for like four minutes, four or five minutes, and then I was like, "Oh, all right. Oh, uh, what's next?" So then I kept going and I got the upgrade. I got like the VIP suite. And after that, I was like, oh, uh, all right, no, oh, whatever. And I didn't take the time to celebrate that or, or I really acknowledge that achievement. We just, all right, let's go on to the next one. When's the next trip? You know, I wanna go on that one. There's a Hawaii trip in six months. All right, I'm gonna start working on winning that. Um, so it's terrible. Um, it doesn't, what this, what this mindset, uh, really does it stops you from from seeing yourself as valuable and and creating self-esteem for yourself and having pride in your work and, and taking some uh, yeah taking some value there right all right let's take a break here for a second uh, what's up Yolanda Baxter oh yeah Jody yeah it's all going to fail it's all going down yeah so these are these are thinking traps these are not um, aspects of, of your personality that you can't change. These are, may have been long-term thinking patterns or ways that we've been viewing the world or, or the way that we look at life. And the truth is that we can challenge all these negative thinking patterns, all these negative thinking traps, um, and saying to yourself something like, you know, I'm just a cynic or I'm, I'm, I'm critical. I'm a pessimist. I'm very cautious. Having justifications for why you need to continue in these negative mindsets is is awful. It's it's really just a trap to keep you for it feels safe, familiar, comfortable, right? That that's terrible. The truth is that we can change, we can adopt new mindsets, we can push out our negative thinking and think more in line with our values and our identity. So number 11, we got two more. 
self-sabotage. This is the, ah, oh, screw it mentality. F, F this. You know, one small thing went wrong, so might as well just screw the whole thing, right? Uh, you know, like, uh, I already messed up here. Might as well just keep messing up anyway. Or, you know, I already broke my diet. I'm not, I'm not supposed to be eating sugar. And I already had three Oreo cookies. Ah, uh, screw it. I'm eating the whole box. <laughs> you know, I shouldn't be having strawberry ice cream. Uh, you know, I uh, forget it. I'm going to eat it anyway. Screw it. Self-sabotage, right? Self-sabotage. False self-thinking. This is, uh, the other way to say this is, is, is wearing a mask, right? We put on this false sense of self. This is the mentality that you adapt in order, uh, people do this in order to be liked, to be accepted, to gain a sense of, of self-worth, to feel liked by others, right? You're, in reality, in reality, um, what this does is perpetuates a false sense of self. You're like a chameleon, almost trying to adapt to what you think others want you to be. And that's no way to live. It's a shortcut to go to depression, if you ask me. By continuing to present yourself as someone as as you're not is out of integrity. It's inauthentic. And I think it robs you of feeling good about yourself. If someone doesn't want to accept you or see you, um, be your friend or be around you, that's on them, right? Not, you're not for everybody. Everybody's not for you and you have to be okay with that, right? Um, the world's too big, um, for us to focus on those things. All right, we're running out of time. I wanted to give you the six solutions, six solution. Number one, gratitude, practice, write down three things every day that you're grateful for D different things, three things. And you want to practice this over the next 30 days and then reevaluate how did practicing gratitude make an impact in my life. So today's February 3rd, March 3rd. We're going to look at it again and say, how did practicing gratitude for 30 days change the way I think? Number two, self-acceptance and love. This means that you need to accept who you are, how you are, the good and the bad, right? We all have good and bad traits about ourselves. It doesn't mean we're going to stay that way forever, but we have to accept and love who we are and where we are in life. Um, we don't have to accept that I'm going to stay in this place uh, for the rest of our lives, but I can feel content and good about myself. And when I do that, I have the ability to be creative and pour out and bless others with my gifts, my talents, my abilities, my knowledge, and so do you. Okay, so number three, replace negative thoughts with truth. The Bible tells us that we have to demolish all arguments, every pretension, every thought that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive. We take it captive and then we make it obedient to the truth. Right, that's 2 Corinthians 10, 5. I love it that the Bible talks about taking our thoughts captive. It's really challenging our thoughts, stopping them and saying, does this line up with the truth? Is this, is this thought right here? Is this who I actually am? Well, what's my source for truth? For me, I find my sense of identity and my source of truth um, in the Bible. You got to find what works for you. Um, but I look back and I say, does this line up with my value system? Does this line up with who I am? Does this line up? And if it doesn't... Pfft, we, we, we reject that shit. We throw that out. Forget that. Okay? Number four, thought stopping. This is how we challenge our negative thoughts. And literally what I do is I say, stop. Right? I, I, I say it out loud. Stop. Or you just do it in your head when the, like, you know, you don't want to be screaming out, stop stop while, like, while you're in an elevator with like 10 people, right? That'd be weird. <laughs> so just do the stop in your head. Stop. When the negative thinking comes up, when the negative mindset comes up, and challenge that, resist it, push back against that. That's not true. The truth is I'm getting better and better. I'm learning. I'm getting results. I'm investing in myself, right? What's the truth? All right, last one. Oh, no, two more. Do a, I don't know, this is the last one I want to do. Do a digital detox, right? And it's crazy because I just finished this yesterday. That's why I haven't been doing wake up calls uh, for the past past month. I've been doing a digital detox where I deleted Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all my social media, even my email. I took it all off my phone. I basically made it a dumb phone. 
Um, and I'll tell you, man, it was amazing for me. I feel refreshed. Um, I feel cleaner in my thinking. I feel more rested. I'm sleeping better. By reducing the amount of time that you're taking in um, social media images and staring at your screen, it's going to affect your sense of well-being. Seeing the highlight reel of everybody's life 24-7 um, you know, and comparing it to yourself is a quick way to feel really negative. So if you are overwhelmed and addicted to your phone and, and, and social media, do a detox, take a break. I know it's weird for me as, as a digital marketer in an online system to be saying this, but what I did is I moved all of my, my social media use to my, my, my desktop here, to my desktop computer, and just took it off my phone for a, for a season so I could find that rest. So guys, these are, I'll give you the last one. Uh, like I said, you got to find your sense of identity, your sense of worth, your sense of well-being, your value system, and really truly embrace it and how you've been created. Um, I find my... Uh, I find a, a sense of, of peace when I embrace my identity and who I think God has created me to be. It's a really a shortcut, um, to, to battling negative thinking is your identity. So for me, again, I find my identity in Christ through a, a biblical view. If you're finding your identity in your work, in money, in your status, when those things change, it rocks you. It rocks your sense of self, your sense of value, sense your worth. What if you were finding your value in My Lead System Pro and your name on the leaderboard? If you found your your sense of worth and on your your company sales totals, how well your team was duplicating, right? And then what happens if your sales slow down? If your team doesn't do well, so does your sense of value, your identity, your sense of worth. That's no way to go through life. You're on roller coaster up and down, never know how you're going to feel at any one day, right? So, yeah, the digital detox thing was huge. The identity, thought stopping, challenging our thoughts, replacing our negative thoughts with truth, practicing gratitude, write down three gratitude every day, and then self-acceptance as love. Um, for our community, I feel the two that are going to be really powerful here are gratitude, um, and the digital detox. So that's why you didn't see me doing Facebook lives or Instagram lives. Um, for those of you that follow me over the past month, wasn't a big ask to, to, to uh, take a break from doing those things to uh, really invest in, in getting clear clarity of my thinking. You can always add them back on your phone. So guys, thank you so much for hopping on today's wake up call and our, uh, our, our, uh, Facebook Live recap here. I am Ron Gilock, L5 leader at My Lead System Pro. This is my buddy Baxter, the Honey Badger. Um, thank you guys for being on the call, and I'll see you again soon. God bless.